In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we remember Dr. James N. Kenny, Sr. Uh, we also honor today uh, St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, uh, also known as Edith Stein. So she was someone who died in the Nazi persecutions, having grown up as a Jew, becoming actually a, a very uh, learned philosopher, converting to Catholicism, joining the Carmelites, becoming a Carmelite nun, and then moving, at the, her order moved her prudently from Germany to the Netherlands to try to protect her, but uh, it turns out that uh, the Nazis ended up arresting <clears throat> those who were Christian converts from Judaism, and it was for this reason that she uh, was uh, sent to concentration camps and died as a martyr. So um, just a, a tremendous, uh, tremendous life, a very unusual life, I might say, uh, for Edith Stein, and we honor her this day. Let us pre uh, prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries by first asking the Lord for his mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of our fathers, who brought the martyr, St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, to know your crucified Son, and to imitate him even until death, grant through her intercession that the whole human race may acknowledge Christ as its Savior, and through him come to behold you for eternity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord said to me, As for you, son of man, obey me when I speak to you. Be not rebellious like this house of rebellion, but open your mouth and eat what I shall give you. It was then I, it was then I saw a hand stretched out to me, in which was written a scroll, which he unrolled before me, it was covered with writing, front and back, and, and was written on it, Lamentation and wailing and woe. He said to me, Son of man, eat what is before you. Eat this scroll, then go speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he gave me the scroll to eat. Son of man, he then said to me, Feed your, feed your belly and fill your stomach with this scroll that I'm giving you. I ate it, and it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. He said, Son of man, now go to the house of Israel and speak my words to them. The word of the Lord. How sweet to my taste is your promise. How sweet to my taste is your promise. In the way of your decrees I rejoice as much as in all riches. How sweet to my taste is your promise. Yes, your decrees are my delight. They are my counselors. How sweet to my taste is your promise. The law of your mouth is to me more precious than thousands of gold and silver pieces. How sweet to my taste is your promise. How sweet to my palate are your promises, sweeter than honey to my mouth. How sweet to my taste is your promise. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. The joy of my heart they are. How sweet to my taste is your promise. I gasp with open mouth in my yearning for your commands. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The disciples approached Jesus and said, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child over, placed it in their midst, and said, Amen, I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you that their angels in heaven always look upon the face of my heavenly Father. What is your opinion? If a man has a hundred sheep and one, one of them goes astray, will he not leave the ninety-nine in the hills and go in search of the stray? And if he finds it, amen, I say to you, he rejoices over it more than the other ninety-nine that did not stray. In just the same way, it is not the will of your heavenly Father that one of these little ones be lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we hear in the first reading from Ezekiel as he has been called as a prophet, and in order to um, empower him for the work he would do. He is given the word of the Lord, literally given the word of the Lord to eat. Uh, so he sees the scroll, and the scroll contains lamentation, wailing, and woe. But when he receives it, when he consumes it, it was as sweet as honey in his mouth. And to this we might also add the uh, responsorial song, How sweet to my taste is your promise. So it, and it seems contradictory that you would have a message that will be filled with uh, penance or with suffering or with wailing or lamentation and yet that would be something that would be received and it would be sweet it would be sweet to the taste that there would be good that would come from that um, there are all sorts of examples that we could give where we recognize this principle already in our in our life um, a person who's trying to be more healthy may go through the suffering of um, eating less restricting what they eat but then they have the joy of having lost weight and being healthier or the suffering of going to the gym and exercising and pushing oneself to do difficult things, but then the rewards of better health or better strength. A student might go through the suffering of having to study and do homework, but receives the reward of a good grade. Or we can think of, of many other examples on top of that. Um, and so there is a truth here about carrying our crosses, about bearing our burdens. Um, that we should do this with a sense of confidence and with a sense of trust in the Lord. And in fact, good things can come from that. So there are fruits that come from the cross. Um, it's something that, that uh, Sister that St. Benedict of the Cross would also explain to us, I'm sure. Um, she in, in, endured her suffering, but we might say that her, sanctify, her sanctity has uh, been magnified on account of it. But it seems to me, though, that there's even something, uh, maybe a little more, that we could take from this imagery of consuming, of eating the Word of God, of, of receiving that scroll. It's not just enough that Ezekiel had to read it. I mean, he could read the message and then uh, read a, a, a sad message, but then it could be something that would turn to joy. No, it's something that he takes in. And this almost, I think for us, especially when we're here at Mass, reminds us of the Eucharist. We consume our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. So this is a gift that is given to us. So here we, we'd see the Word of God. Well, we speak about the Word incarnate of God present here in the Eucharist. And so there's something, I think, remarkable about this, and that perhaps part of the joy that we experience comes from uniting ourselves with our Lord, even in his sufferings. Um, I was taking communion to, to someone who um, was in a certain amount of pain, and one of the thoughts that I uh, reflected on and that I mentioned was to describe to the person, well, remember that you're receiving Jesus who himself bore his pains and his sufferings and his cross for your salvation. 
and that by consuming our Lord, by receiving him, then we are uniting ourselves with our Lord in a tremendously intimate way. And that's something that a person in the midst of suffering can also do, so to unite their sufferings with those of Christ. We say that, we say, well, offer up your sufferings, but no, I mean, in a very tangible way, we can almost see that union, um, the way in which we can bring ourselves closer into union with our Lord. And one of the reasons why I think we can have such confidence is that we know the great victory that Jesus won through his suffering. We know of the great joy that followed the pain of his crucifixion. So all the more can we be confident that whatever lamentation, wailing, and woe we may have to bear, that it in fact becomes sweet to the taste, sweet as honey in the mouth, uh, something that is in fact a reward and, and can even fill us with great joy. So let us always maintain confidence in this truth of the spiritual life, something that is maybe not always the easiest message for us to hear, but let us receive it with childlike trust, uh, asking the Lord to bring good out of whatever trials we must endure. Let us stand to present our prayers and petitions. We pray for the Holy Catholic Church and the holy people of God that we might consecrate, consecrate ourselves to the Lord by offering up what the Lord has given us to him. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear we pray for nations around the world for a greater respect for human dignity, um, especially in places where uh, many people may suffer. We ask, especially through the intercession of St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, uh, to pray for, to intercede for those who are persecuted. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the gift of justice in our own country, uh, that we might uh, be a place where justice is always practiced and observed. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the sick, the suffering, those who struggle, uh, that the Lord might comfort them in their hour of need. We pray to the Lord. For all of the faithful departed, especially the deceased members of the Kenny family for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. For the safeguarding of our religious liberties, St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, Cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for all of the Holy Church. 
May the offerings we bring in celebration of St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross win your gracious acceptance, O Lord, we pray, just as the struggle of her suffering and passion was pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle the victory is yours, through Christ our Lord. Therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Teresa Benedicta, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Louis, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, 
forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with and let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O God, who bestowed on St. Teresa Benedicta a crown among the saints for her twofold triumph of virginity and martyrdom, grant, we pray, through the power of this sacrament, that bravely overcoming every evil, we may attain the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The, uh, there's an interesting detail about Edith Stein, about Teresa Benedicta, in that uh, although she was in the Netherlands at the time she was arrested by the Nazis, the reason she was arrested was because the Dutch bishops um, had a statement issued condemning Nazi racism, and the Nazis retaliated by arresting Jewish converts to Christianity. So seeing that, um, perhaps people might understand that Pius XII maybe was a little hesitant to be a little too bold, wondering if he might actually precipitate more suffering. So I know sometimes Pius XII gets kind of a tough, um, kind of, history sometimes doesn't always look back on him as kindly, but maybe he did the best he could under the circumstances. So for, for people of kind of history buffs, well, actually for John, okay, that's, that's a, yeah. So no, it's, a, it's an interesting detail, but Teresa Benedict is caught up, I think, in that entire, uh, that entire time of history. Very tumultuous time, very tough time for the church, uh, but one, a time in which we see some really heroic saints. Uh, the, the, uh, we honor the Mother of God, as we say, Hail Mary, Mary full, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.